Hello to you, fellow being. Infinite Spiral here, and we are back, as usual, in Kerbal Space Program. So, in our previous episode, there was a, sort of a massive misunderstanding of how the asteroid tracking system works. Um, I'm sure if you watched that episode and are at all experienced in uh, asteroid capturing or any of the systems involved there, it was probably a really frustrating experience for you, so I do apologize for that, but uh, it's, it's a learning experience for me. So, in the time since then, I have rectified that situation, and uh, I now understand somewhat how the asteroid system works. My foolishness was not knowing about this little button right down here. Track object. And there you can see what's going on with that, and it... Apparently, uh, this one is going to get captured? By a Kerbin? Not totally certain what's going on with that. There's a Kerbin encounter. Oh, Kerbin escape. Okay, never mind. Yeah, that's on an escape path. <laughs> but uh, in an attempt to rectify that horrible failure, I'm going to try something a little audacious. I am going to try to still salvage this original uh, Evesteroid Delivery Service Phase 2 mission. If that thing is now stuck in orbit around Kerbal for now, and apparently the trajectory we put it on actually intersects with Eve's orbit, sort of, almost, kind of, <laughs> at least on its uh, periapsis, it gets close, even if the inclination is a bit off, but I I think I'm going to go around some number of years as these asteroids appear and disappear on the off chance that a Class B will show up in some sort of arrangement that will allow me to try and rendezvous with it. I I have serious doubts about the uh, feasibility of that. I, I you know, it seems like a pretty pretty small chance that that would happen. But uh, there's a chance that we might actually be able to get recaptured by Kerbin, depending on how things go, so... I don't know, we're just going to start time warping and find out, and keep an eye on these asteroids as they appear and disappear, because this one, that's a no-go. So here we go. Alright, we've got another Class B, let's see what it's doing. That's another Kerbin escape, and yeah, no way that's going to happen. We are way out ahead of it, so continuing along. And another. Yeah, I think basically they're all probably going to be on these escape trajectories, so it might not even be worthwhile to check in on them until this thing is closer to a Kerbin approach. Like, once we go around almost entirely and get back out to the apoapsis, so... I don't know. I'll keep an eye on them and see if there's any, you know, different types of asteroid encounters. But, in any case, I'll see you when we get something. <laughs> Who knows what it'll be. Oh. Well, it would appear that we have an asteroid here that's in an actual Kerbin orbit. Interesting. So, its velocity is 9600, almost 9700. And Kerbin's is 9,300 almost, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's got a wider orbit, clearly. And we only intersect with it out here at Kerbin's. Hmm, I think that might be the one to try for. Uh, we'll keep an eye out and see if there's anything better, but that looks like the target for now. Alright, well, we haven't seen anything new that would be a promising candidate. Candidate. <laughs> and I did not realize just how quickly this uh, screen would start to get really cluttered up with these asteroids when you start tracking them. But, uh, so the Evesteroid Delivery Service Phase 1 is out at its periapsis, or close to. So I'm going to go and find out just what kind of maneuver it's going to be, because we are on our final stage already. And uh, we've got, you know, pretty much full tanks. Oh, entirely almost entirely full, just a little bit of oxidizer missing, but just gonna find out what it's gonna cost us to match that uh, Class B orbit. Oh, apparently we have long passed our apoapsis. Weird. Anyway, <laughs> let's just see what that looks like. And I need to go back to the tracking station because I don't remember which one it is. <laughs> I need to remember the name. Be right back. Okay, so apparently all of those previous tracking uh, inquiries or whatever were lying to me because every single one of these is in Kerbin orbit. None of them are on escape pads anymore. What the hell? 
<laughs> All right, well, that uh, that broadens the list of possible candidates for sure. And I think one that is closer in might be a better target. Potentially. Because, you know, it's catching up, obviously. And this has an intersection with its path right here. And we just need to, you know, fix our inclination and do all that stuff. But we might be able to set it up for a passive rendezvous. Just let the asteroid catch up to us. I think that might, well, I guess its full orbit isn't inside of ours. So it's definitely going to cost fuel no matter what. But I think this would be a much less uh, extreme burn. A much less extreme consumption of our fuel than, uh, you know, say this one. This much further out. So, I think that is going to be the plan. So, anyway, that is the uh, NHM-324. NHM-324, must remember. Okay, NHM-324, set as target. Yeah, that was the, one of the many things that I was wrong about last time. Once you're tracking them, you absolutely can set them as a target, so that makes everything vastly easier. <laughs> All right, so we have our crossing here at the intersection. So we'll just set up a maneuver, find out what it's going to cost to match. A little bit of prograde, a little bit of radial out. And obviously we don't want to match it fully. At least not until it is uh, close to us. But there's that, and then we'll have to have a second burn to fix inclination, but right now we're looking at apparently a completely negligible burn? Or what? Oh, never mind, that was based on the, uh, <laughs> the maneuver I had set up earlier that had nothing going on. So, back to it. Okay, so that's uh, 1100 meters per second. I think we can handle that without too much effort. That shouldn't be too bad at all. I'd have to give it a test burn just to find out what sort of a, a time frame we're looking at for that. Okay, that's apparently a three minute burn. That's a little more than I expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess we can do that. I don't remember what kind of burn got us here in the first place, so I don't know how much fuel that's gonna go through. But right now, so it needs to catch up to us anyway. Or we could leave things the way they are and have us catch up to it. I think, yeah, that's that's a better plan. We'll just go around for a little while and let it catch up on a few different passes. And I'll go ahead and start fast forwarding for you. And maybe I should fix my inclination now. I think it might be more efficient to do it after we widen the orbit, but let's just get an idea of what it's going to cost. Okay, so close to the same amount. It's 850 meters per second, so that's like a two minute burn to do that. I think I'll wait until we push it out, just in case that is more efficient. I'm just going to go ahead and make a quick retro burn, bring our entire orbit inside of it, just so we catch up faster, because we're losing some, uh, some of our momentum every time we push outside of it. So let's just do this real quick. I don't think that's gonna cost very much. Maybe like a 20 second burn, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully not more than that. Or at the very least, yeah, yeah, let's not bring it inside, we'll just match it. I think that's a better idea. Like so. A little further. There, okay. So now we will catch up slightly more effectively. Back to the fast forwarding. All right, so we are beginning to approach it. I'm just gonna do a test maneuver real quick just to be sure that we're not gonna miss it on this pass. Okay, it looks like if we do a two minute retro burn, we can meet up with it right here and that also brings us into, well, I mean, no, we're going to have to correct a lot when we get there in terms of our velocity, so we will end up matching its, uh, its orbit anyway. I was about to say that it's nice that uh, it's set up this way because that intersects with EVE, but 
that's not how that works. <laughs> I was thinking I was saving some fuel by having that orbit, but that's just a, uh, a tentative orbit, because as I've said, once we go for the rendezvous, we are definitely going to have a very different orbit than this target one. It's going to be much more like the, uh, the asteroid's current orbit. So, maybe that is not worth it. <laughs> I think we'd be better off... I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep testing different uh, maneuver possibilities, but I'm basically going to try and keep this as efficient as possible, which means matching its orbit when the time comes. I, I'm, I'm not explaining myself very well. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Wow. Okay, so this was set up pretty decently because now that we've passed that uh, previous year, this next encounter after we make this uh, last revolution here, we are very close to an encounter. So we are going to be fixing our inclination here at the descending node. And that's definitely where we're going to make our maneuver to set up the rendezvous. Because, you know, we still need to catch up with the current setup, but it's not by nearly as much. So, that's now the plan. Alright, so I keep on setting up my encounters, or my uh, maneuvers, a little bit too close to the ship and passing them in the process so I can't, uh, you know, fix them any further. But the current one puts us at a 6,000 kilometer separation, which is... Not that far off, so I'm just going to go ahead and make that burn. And then we will have to alter that after the fact. But yeah, it's about a two and a half minute burn, which is not that bad. It's, uh, you know, roughly what it would have been <laughs> during any of our previous setup attempts without the rendezvous involved. So, yeah, I'm liking this. Looks good. Also... I think we're going to run out of fuel on this mission. <laughs> I don't think we're going to complete it. It was slightly more audacious. Audacious, yes. <laughs> audacious than uh, uh, probably we were capable of. But I don't know. I maybe could have picked a better target or done something differently. But in any case, let's just get to it. All right, so after the burn, we actually ended up slightly closer to uh, the planned maneuver than... or slightly slightly closer in our separation at the intersection than even the maneuver had planned. So that's, that's good. <laughs> um, we are going to have to correct, I think, the inclination. I think that's part of our separation there. And then also, you know, obviously our velocity, because we don't quite have a full match on the orbit, which, you know, we don't quite want until we're really, really close to the thing, but I'm just going to keep messing with maneuver nodes and see how close I can bring that separation. Alright, so it doesn't seem to really matter what we do with our maneuvers. Uh, we get down to a minimum of about 2,000 kilometers with uh, all of the efforts, so I think what I'm going to do is just make another correction at the ascending node, try and get the inclination to match even more accurately, because I mean, we're at 0, 0.0 degrees, but, you know, fractions of that can still make a pretty huge difference. So, you know, I need like three more decimal places in terms of uh, precision. So I'm going to go ahead and make that correction there and just sort of... do. Uh, Go by the seat of my pants, as usual. <laughs> Alright, we're going to warp to that maneuver. Make our 5 meter per second uh, correction. And just see how see where we go from there. Because, you know, we're pretty close to the thing. And getting closer. Okay, we're coming in ahead of it. That's what's going on with that. No wonder my corrections were going off. I was, uh, expecting to be behind it still. Okay. Well, in that case, I shouldn't have passed it. <laughs> oh, well, we can still fix that. That's no problem. Yeah, because we still go come slightly outside of its orbit anyway. Alright, so let's just fix this 5 meter per second difference real quick. In fact, let's get rid of the maneuver node and just see what these are looking like. 
we can push that a bit further. And yeah, that was even too much. Not a big deal. Alright, so our inclination is definitely matched at this point. And that thing is currently 55,000 kilometers away, but shrinking. So, it... really? That seems weird. <laughs> I would expect it to be getting further away from us still since we're inside of its orbit, but apparently that's not the case. So it's catching up to us. Here we come. And... Okay, I think this is where we want to make our correction, because we're so very, very close. Our approach is there. So what does it look like if I make a maneuver here, now that we're so close to it happening? So I need to be able to see this intersect. So it's a 4500. Retro burn, still 4500. Yeah, that's not really doing it, although keeping it prograde is bringing it down. The problem with that is we're starting to match the or target orbit, and, uh, you know, that basically we'll be at the same distance from it forever if we do that. We need to actually keep the difference in velocities and fix instead our uh, radial go out to meet it that's the plan so right now we are still coming in ahead of it okay so a slight retro burn should fix that I should think apparently not <laughs> I don't know yeah I think we want a radial out yeah because that'll get us even closer to it, and then we'll be outside of its orbit, it'll pass us. Yeah, that's that's a good plan, I think. Let's get out of time warp, just start that process right now. Radial out a bit. Okay, so now our orbit is outside and it'll be able to pass us. And it does indeed, because our next intersect it has passed us during that process, so... Let's go ahead and time warp out to that. Okay, so right now, it's still in front of us. Wait, it's in front of us? What the hell? <laughs> What's going on here? This is confusing. Alright, well, most of our orbit is inside of it, so we'll definitely catch up to it again. Sometime in the near future. I think I'm looking at too many orbits. These lines here keep intersecting and confusing me. Because, yeah, the, the color of this line is slightly blue and it keeps making me think that that's our orbit, but it's not. That's what, Kerbin? What is that? Yeah, it is Kerbin. <laughs> okay, that's where my confusion is coming from, partially. So... Well, I'm going to mess with maneuvers again and see if I can get something better on the opposite side. I think it's time to stop messing around and just catch up to this thing. No maneuvers, nothing, just burning straight at the target. Because right now it's getting away from us and this is about the closest we're going to get to it. So we need to match its velocity, which is 9204.3. Now, we're catching up to it. <laughs> And if we push it a bit further, we'll catch up even faster. And now we've got an approach up here at 1600 kilometers. Okay, yeah, I, w I was reading this wrong. I was like, w we're only three kilometers away. How is that possible? But no, <laughs> we're 3000 away. Because if we just match our orbit to its, which we basically just did, but... um. Yeah, I had a maneuver set up that would have put us at 75 kilometers from it. Which is really close, comparatively. But I think what we're just going to do 
is match up with uh, we're gonna go get it <laughs> i'm done planning i'm done making yeah i don't know i'm getting impatient <laughs> which is probably not uh not beneficial to our cause but what can i say i really want to do this i want to do it now so we'll get up to that intersect and then make a correction there because we are going to pass it actually before we get up there. So let's watch that happen. Yes, as we approach. Okay, so we're at 92.52 and it is 92.15. So we are still approaching it. Okay, so we have a 38.1 meter per second difference there. And we're still approaching and passing. Okay, so now it's time to make some corrections. We need to burn groundward and basically right at, right at the target again. <laughs> Need to get our prograde direction pointed at it, kind of. Or no, entirely. <laughs> I forgot, when you change the, uh, the velocity meter, it actually changes all of your nav ball markers as well. So there, now we're heading straight at it at 66.8 meters per second. Fast forward a bit, see what our difference is or separation is a hundred kilometers and sh shrinking wonder if we can see it yet I sort of doubt it but you never know and how's our fuel half a tank <laughs> yeah I, I have significant doubts about our ability to bring this thing to Eve anymore but I'm still gonna keep going with it at the very least I can capture it and you know grab it <laughs> with my ship <laughs> and just be attached to it That'll still be a success in my book. All right, let's keep heading straight at it. There we go. All right. And we are close enough that we can see it. There it is. Okay. Let's just follow that and match its uh, motion. Because we do need to cancel out all of that difference in velocity that we had. Which we have done. And now we've got a difference in velocity as we continue to approach it. We're probably a little too fast. So we're going to have to burn retro. Like so. Hello there. Alright. We're still getting closer to it. <clears throat> but at a much more manageable rate. Alright, almost directly at it. Just need to match those markers up exactly. Like that. Okay, 2.7 meters per second and heading straight at the thing. We can even boost a tiny bit for slight or greater accuracy. Like that. Even a tiny bit more. Alright, that's about as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> And it is time to activate the claw, arm the advanced grabbing unit. We are ready to grab. I'm coming for you, Nim324. Alright, here we go. My first ever asteroid encounter. First time I've seen one up close. It's a special shape. Okay, here we go. And, uh, you didn't grab. Why didn't you grab? Were we going too fast? Maybe. Maybe we were. Let's try again. Now we're going slower. Yes. Grab. Excellent. Okay. So we've got the thing. Now, I don't know if there's any way to actually see its center of gravity. I think you have to just sort of figure that out visually, maybe. Center of gravity. Center of mass is what I meant. But uh, you can free pivot. So you can, uh, you can actually change your orientation towards the thing 
uh, just pivoting around the claw attachment. So we're going to try that. Like so. <laughs> it's a little bit weird. I need to figure out... I don't know uh, what my orientation is. That's part of the problem. Sort of like controlling something when your controls are scrambled. But this is working. Okay. I wish I had a hotkey set up to stop the free pivot. So I think I'm going to get that on screen and then continue to turn. So I'm ready to lock the pivot when the time is right. Let's try that. <laughs> that looks pretty centered. All right, and now we get to try finding out what we can do with this thing. So we've got, I, I have, we'll probably have to do another test burn once we set up a maneuver. But we need to try and bring it to EVE, so the best way to do that, I mean obviously we have to bring our orbit in. So let's just find out what kind of a cost that is right off the bat. Probably pretty extreme. Oh, and we need to set Eve as the target, like so. Oh, and the massive inclination difference as well, of course. Alright, so that has Eve behind us ca and catching up. Which is good, because, you know, our orbit will be eccentric, and that's apparently a one minute burn. I don't know how it knows that, since we haven't pushed the mass of this thing yet. Maybe it's lying to me. I think it probably is. All right, so I am going to tool around with all of these maneuvers and, you know, possibilities. And I'll get back to you when I've got something that looks really nice. All right, so to start with, I'm just going to do the same thing we did with this, which is to fix the inclination and then from there, wait around for the right uh, planetary alignment before we make another maneuver. Sound good? All right, let's do that. All right, so we're here at the maneuver node, and now we get to find out just how centered I am on the thing's uh, center of mass. Find out how this burn's gonna go. So we need to start our burn at T minus uh, 19. Around about, I mean, it's not gonna be too particularly sensitive, since it is a Kerbal uh, orbit. You know, they're pretty enormous. You can sort of get away with quite a bit of error without too much, that was error, <laughs> without too much concern. So we'll go ahead and do it now. And yeah, it hadn't taken the asteroid's mass into account whatsoever. So now we know that. And yes, we absolutely are not centered on it, although we are kind of close. I think... Oof. It just makes a little, little wonky to control, that's all. <laughs> we have to sort of stay on top of it. So I think I will be repositioning slightly once this is done. Alright, that should do it. <clears throat> I believe. Let's look at the ascending and descending nodes. Point 0.1 off. Okay, so we need, we actually went too far. So once we get up to that node, then we will make a normal burn as opposed to anti-normal which was what we just did but okay so the the asteroid was sort of forcing our nose up so I think we need to huh. <laughs> I don't know how to think about this it's a, it's a new sort of prospect so I'm gonna get out to the get out of the map screen get uh, looking at the thing so I can figure out what exactly I'm trying to figure out so nose up is that direction there we go so that nose is up and that's the way that it was forcing us while we were burning which means that we need to angle more nose 
down. Or <laughs> I don't know, the, the 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 reference point is a little weird. Basically, we need to decrease this angle and increase this one. I think. So that was Yes, I'll, I'll figure it out and uh, get back to you after. Alright, I think I've made the correction, so I'm just going to go ahead and warp up to the descending node again. And find out... Oh, out of time warp, hello. There we go. Find out just how much our uh, modification has changed it. Has changed its effect on our thrust. We're going to do a very small thrust, and... Well, with a small thrust, it didn't seem to do much at all. And I think that's a promising thing. Uh, we'll see what happens when we do our full burn, but in the meantime, we're going to continue to let Eve catch up to us, I believe. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mess around with the maneuver nodes again and see if we can get a good approach sometime during this revolution. And this mission has been going for eight years, almost... Well, eight, eight and a half years, roughly, apparently, and uh, I forgot how long a year is again. It was like 400-something, so yeah, almost eight and a half years, but yeah, so we still have more than 20 years to finish this contract. That's no problem. Anyway, I will mess around with my maneuver nodes and get back to you when I've got a good approach. Well, I was pretty much spot on with that one. <laughs> Never mind the leaving and coming back part. I got it on the first try. So that's a super high periapsis, but that's fine. We just needed to get an encounter with it, and from there we can get an orbit. And in fact, the further out it is, the better, because that means that we'll be wasting less while we establish the orbit. So I'm just going to futz around with it to get a smaller and smaller burn. I think that's pretty much it, so yes. That's it right there, minute and 23 seconds, and I think we can handle that. It's going to be cutting it close. Um, maybe not. Maybe we'll be just fine. As long as we can get into orbit around EVE, it's going to be really, really easy. Because I'm pretty sure the, uh, the station that's already in orbit has a decent amount of fuel left in it. Like... At least a third of a tank or so. <laughs> so between the two craft, I think we'll be able to manage this. I can't believe this is actually working. This is awesome. All right, let's warp out to that uh, maneuver and get on with it. Okay, it took us to T minus 50 seconds, which was a little closer than I would have liked, but I think we'll be able to get to the node just as it's time. Maybe a little sooner, but whatever. Alright, it's still uh, still pushing the nose up, but it's still within the realm of being easily controllable, so no problem there. Let's just watch this process from here. You can see it wobbling back and forth. <laughs> uh, special. So I'm just doing my best to stay on the maneuver node, and I'll get back to you when I either run out of fuel or finish this maneuver, or this burn, rather. Okay, we're doing just fine for fuel. I think we'll be able to get this orbit, no problem. Don't know exactly what it's going to take to uh, solidify it once we get into that encounter, but... I don't know, but we, maybe we'd be better off actually dipping into atmosphere, but that seems a little more dangerous than I'd like to attempt at this point. <laughs> but there, we're within 0.2 meters per second of the target, and we've got a periapsis, and an actually a little bit high, uh, lower one than the, 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 the maneuver had established. So let's get out to the encounter. I should think we'd be able to see Eve by now. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, we're pretty damn close. All right. And here comes the encounter. There we go. We have entered Eve's sphere of influence. And yeah, that is a very, very low periapsis, much lower than I expected. Well, let's just find out what kind of a burn it'll take to uh, get an orbit. 
So that's a 19 seconds. Yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> okay, this is no problem. We've got this. We've got it in the bag. Um, I'm not totally certain where Eve's uh, atmosphere starts, so that's... Ah, oh, never mind. There's no way it stretches out that far. <laughs> that's just silliness. Alright, so let's just get out to that periapsis and finish this mission. Well, I mean, you know, there's a few more steps, but still. We'll get it. It's no problem. Alright, EVE orbit established, and we just need to fix our orientation. Clearly, <laughs> our inclination, rather. Um, it's probably going to be a two-step process. Can we set this as a target? Yes, we can. Very nice. This game is so versatile. Way more than you ever expect it to be. Well, maybe not. More than I usually expect it to be. So let's drop that maneuver node. Don't need that. And we will just go ahead and set up this maneuver and work on rendezvousing with the Gargantu Gileve Station Phase 1. Alright, step one. Fix inclination. Done. Step two, set up rendezvous. So right now it's way out ahead of us, and we'll be catching up. So in fact, I think we're going to push out our periapsis just a bit, because it's probably a little bit ridiculous right now. And also, I'm going to push our apoapsis up to actually coincide with the target, which I think will be mostly <clears throat> prograde and radial in. No, radial out, yeah. Prograde plus radial out. So that'll be roughly there. There we go. Very nice. So let's just warp out to the apoapsis and find out how quickly those are going to change, because <laughs> it's going to be pretty quick. And by those, I meant the... Uh, it, target positions and intersects and such. Okay, so after passing one, they are now vastly different, and indeed, if we leave it the way it is, we will come out way ahead of it. So, <laughs> we're just gonna make a maneuver here and see about getting this rendezvous. Alright, that's a nice little three second burn, and after making a full rotation, we'll be right up on top of it at 25 kilometers of separation. And that we can work with. So let's just do that real quick. And we're at T minus 15 seconds, but that's close enough. There. <laughs> Doesn't take much at all. But we'll just. Make the final corrections, bring that down to zero, or point 0.1 as it usually ends up being. Or a little further. So now we're looking at roughly 100 kilo 150 kilometers of separation at that pass, so let's just get around to it! Alright, here we come. Alright, it has now passed us, we just need to catch up to it with target. Yep, it's rushing away from us at 100 meters per second, but that's no problem. We can fix that easily. Easily and handily. There, now we're going towards it. Alright, and where is it? Can we see it? Probably not. <laughs> where? Yeah, it's still... Uh, 200 kilometers away. So let's just fast forward to that. Here it comes. Right over there. And we're still rushing straight towards it. Um, I'm going to orient towards the retrograde just so we don't crash into it. Chances are slim that we'd be that uh, spot on with our trajectory, but still. Better safe than sorry. And back to the time warp. 
just watch that number shrink. Oh yeah, definitely not spot on, but still, pretty nice. So let's just cancel off all of this velocity. In fact, we should probably... Wait, that's the wrong way. <laughs> okay, well, no big deal. We can still catch up to it, no problem. We still have, ooh, starting to get a little low on fuel, but I think it's fine. It's absolutely fine because that thing has fuel as well. Let's just catch up real quick. Probably shouldn't have time warped as much as I did. <laughs> Alright, and here it comes and we get to cancel off again because we keep on using way too much velocity. Yeah, let's make this a much slower approach. Alright. Uh. <laughs> oh, I wish this thing had... I, I wish I had put more markers on it, because it's, it's still rushing away from us. Come on, this isn't hard. We're about to run out of fuel entirely. This is silly. Okay, so we're just going to burn target retrograde, not target retrograde, but velocity retrograde, uh, trajectory retrograde, <laughs> to kill off the rest of that and use up probably the last of our fuel in the process. So right now we're sort of just drifting sideways two kilometers away from it. If I could find our freaking prograde and retrograde, what's going on here? Those things need arrows on them too. Or they should just, you know, show up through the thing since it's transparent. But there's our prograde, okay. Apparently we are still going towards it, even if it doesn't really look like it. There's retrograde, okay. So yeah, we're just killing off this a little bit with the last of this fuel. And I think we're going to have to finish off the rendezvous with the station itself. We could always transfer some fuel into this or do, you know, something, but right now we are going roughly towards it at five meters per second. Maybe not exactly, and let's just make sure we're not on some sort of ridiculous escape trajectory. Indeed, we're not. I didn't expect that we would be. I am definitely glad I put this enormous uh, SAS unit on this, or reaction wheel unit on this craft because it would be very difficult to keep maneuvering this thing around just with torque unless I'd thrown on the uh, RCS that would have made it easier for sure but now that it's oriented let's just fast forward a bit and we're gonna fix it again with remaining fuel to try and get pointed straight at it but without adding unnecessarily any more uh, velocity at least as little as possible. So there, now we're going sort of straight towards it. And we can burn retrograde as we get closer. I know, at this point it's all pretty straightforward. All right, here we are. Time to switch over and get ready to clamp on. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we didn't have quite as much fuel as I expected, but I guess roughly. Now, gotta orient the right way, and figure out, okay, so our hatch is here. No? That's not how we have this thing set up at all. Apparently, we're controlling it from here, I guess? Hmm. Do we have RCS on this thing? I would hope that we do. Apparently, we don't. That was very foolish. RCS would have made this vastly easier. I don't know why I wouldn't have done that. Oh well. <laughs> Apparently I'm just dumb. <laughs> Alright, so we need to set that as target, which we have to do from the map screen, so I guess we'll just go visually. Screw it. No nav ball. Okay. 
Okay, here we come. And here comes the grab. Oh yeah. Beautiful. That should finish that contract. Build the facility into a newly discovered Class B asteroid. Hey, hey, why is it, uh... It took away my check, par check mark for the antenna, docking port, and generating power. Why? We're controlling it. Control from here. Don't you take away my progress. That's garbage. Why would you... Ugh. That's a serious problem. Maybe if I... Just a real quick... Head to the space center. And go back to controlling it from... The tracking center. That might help. So, Gargantia Gilliev, station phase one. Yes. Fly. You better give me that check mark back. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me with this crap? This thing has antennas. I'll show you. You see? They are there. It has a docking port. It's right there. This one has it too. Are you taking it away because this doesn't have antennas on it? Is that the garbage? Is that the garbage that you're trying to sell me? Oh, come on. You can't take away my prog... Maybe if we detach that. Maybe. I'll give that a try after extending this. Just for good measure, for no reason at all. So, let's release that. And that might have been a game crasher if I had not been careful. So, switch back and forth, and maybe... Come on! Why you gotta not give me the check mark? I did. You gave me the check mark back when I put this thing into orbit, and then you took it away. You took it away. <laughs> Come on. I need a reset. Well, this thing's sort of drifting free now. Well, I absolutely salvaged the mission. And they stole it from me, so... <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here. If you have any ideas for how I can get this checkmark to count and actually finish the contract, uh, please, please let me know. Because I am very bothered right now. <laughs> I don't like this. Uh... Alright, well, <laughs> this has been interesting. I'm very happy that I managed to at least bring this thing out here, even if the game doesn't want to give me credit for it. I did it! I did it! <laughs> I salvaged that horrible failed mission from last episode. So, I'm Infinite Spiral, this is Kerbal Space Program. If you enjoyed what you saw here, go ahead and leave a like. If you'd like to see more and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And we will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.